Get me fired? Say goodbye to your bonus and promotion. This happened a good long while ago. I was in high school and got a job at one of the big box stores in the computer department. This store chain had an in-house technician department, which was always where I wanted to go. After busting my ass in sales for two years, putting up with rude customers, silly rules and all the other glorious trappings of retail job, I finally got a chance to be promoted to the technician department. It was not as glamorous as I though it would be, I quickly found out that most of the repairs consisted of running the pre-packaged antivirus suite, updating windows and doing data backups prior to wiping computers clean and reinstalling them. I always liked tinkering with hardware more. But since 80% of customers had laptops and those repairs were deemed too complicated by corporate, we would just send the laptops out to get repaired by the third-party vendor. It was still better than sales by a long shot, and we had a great team working in the technician area, except for one dude, let's call him Mike. He always behaved like his crap smelled like roses. He was technically a lead technician, and even though that just meant he had a little more authority, he had access to a corporate account to arrange shipments of computers to and from our store. He was acting like he was the manager of the department. Nevertheless, our actual manager was a splendid dude that took care of us and as such, Mike's douchery did not bother any of us that much. Fast forward a little and our awesome manager found a much better job, this opened up a spot for manager, and since the whole store supervision was going through a shakeup, the general manager was fired for embezzlement and all the people he hired, 90% of managers, were under review. This lead to everybody trying their hardest not to fuck up. And the new GM decided that since our department was one of the best in the district, he would not try to hire an outsider, but will promote from within. Now Mike was working at this store for almost 10 years at that point and a couple of people that started working with him as sales associates were by this point managers and assistant managers. One of them, Brittany, was an assistant manager in charge of customer services and checkout. One of the conditions for Mike's official promotion to manager was to keep the number one spot in the district performance wise. One of the key metrics was the rejection rate from our third-party vendor, if we mistakenly sent them a software problem to fix, they would charge us extra. Mike started obsessing about the numbers, especially when it came to the rejection rate, he insisted that we would spend extra time to confirm issues, even when there were recalls from manufacturers for these items. I hated this bureaucracy, since it meant that people needed to wait almost the maximum allowed time to get their computers back. So a few times I skipped the extra diagnostics when I knew for sure the problem was hardware. One day, Mike decided to do an audit on all outgoing machines and found out that I've sent 4 units skipping his extra checks, he told me that he will write me up for it. But when he tried, GM told him that he is not a manager yet, and I have shown to the GM that I followed the corporate procedure in diagnosing these units. I thought that was the end of this, but I was sorely mistaken. Mike hated that I showed OGM that Mike's procedure was inefficient and that he was denied power over me. About a month later, I got a call from Mike asking if I could come to the store on my day off because there was an issue with a customer. When I came in, I was greeted by Mike with a shit-eating grin and he told me to wait in the back and not to work on any computers. After about an hour, Mike and Brittany come in and ask me to head to the front office. They started an official write-up process and claim that I have made a mistake creating a backup of customer's data and have placed a DVD with no date on it into the box that was returned to customer and then wiped his PC clean. I knew that it was bullshit, since I always copy the data to an external hard drive, run antivirus to make sure that nothing bad got copied and then burn DVDs, yet, when I asked to check the external hard drive, Mike said that due to my negligence I was not allowed back in the tech area. He went to check the hard drive and said there was nothing on it. At that point I knew he was bullshitting, but him and Brittany were hellbent on completing the write-up. I have asked for a senior management to be present, and was shot down again, turns out GM was on vacation. They completed the write-up and told me that due to the egregious error that cost the company tens of thousands of dollars I was not allowed to work in the tech room and I would be relegated back to the sales floor. I told them to shove it and submitted my resignation on the spot. I later found out that a week later they gave the customer the data that was on the hard drive all this time. Mike simply erased the DVDs, I grabbed a DVD-RW by mistake for that backup, and waited for the customer to come back and complain. I have also called the corporate HR line and told them what happened, they said that since I quit with a letter of resignation, they would not launch an investigation, but they have received and recorded my complaint. Through luck and the fact that I was a good hardware tech, I landed a job at a shop that did hardware repairs a week later and started in another week. Turns out, this depot was the service center that covered the entire district and they had the master contract with a big box chain where I worked. Since I have worked as the tech in that store, 
I was more than familiar with their labeling and ticketing system, for tracking purposes the label included the store and technician number. After a couple of weeks, I gathered some goodwill at my new job and started trading the units with my colleagues to work on as many units from my old store as possible. Over the next three months, I made sure that every single unit sent in by Mike would come back with an extra charge. Also, it turned out that Mike, since he was in charge of shipping, would sometimes steal other technicians tickets to boost his personal performance numbers to secure that manager promotion. Well, that bit him in the ass heart. There was one week in particular, when he sent in over 15 units out of 20 to get fixed and 15 units came back with extra software charge. I have also kept detailed records that prove that the mic did not follow his own policy of extra checks. When the performance figures came out for that quarter, store crashed into 5th place from number 1, Mike missed out on his promotion, and a big bonus that was promised to him. A good buddy of mine from the store got the manager position a few months after that and I have explained to him how to reduce the number of software charges to almost zero, so he looked like a superstar. Mike was first relocated to lead technician, then he was either let go or he quit, I'm not sure. Last I heard he started his own mobile technician business that folded after a year. What I didn't know is that this whole incident with Mike fucking up lead the GM to review everything Mike did including my write-up and dismissal. As it turns out, they did not even register the write-up since I quit on the spot, and buried it. The only way GM was able to find it is because of the HR complaint that was filed against both Mike and Brittany. GM was not pleased that they went behind his back to get rid of someone and fired Brittany. He was a very decent man who called me later that day and apologized and even offered me my old job back. I thanked him but I was making more money at the new place and did not have to deal with customers, so I passed. About 10 years ago my landlord died. Or at least the person who owned the place we were renting. The property managers had been delightful, but whoever inherited wanted to sell, so the house was for sale. Enter a jackass we all call him Jack who decides to buy the place. Now ours was the top floor, e, attic converted into a suite, of a house, less than 35 square meters. The bathroom was literally where the stairs up to the top floor used to be. The place was tiny. Jack came to check out the place, as you should before buying a place. He had one of those Bluetooth earpieces in and I can't even remember if he even acknowledged us. He spent about 30 to 45 seconds in our suite. Next time we hear from him is about a month later, apparently he'd bought the place. He stops by to give us a notice of rent increase, effective in 6 months, legal minimum. From $485 to $795. The place is not worth that much. We say nuts to that and decide to buy a house, since what the hell? It's not much more per month, surprise to anyone who's never bought a house, it was more than just mortgage payments. We give him all the required notice to move out. We move, and clean the place up really well. Mind you, when my partner moved in it was not especially clean, and we happen to have the move in inspection which mentions this. Jack decides to try to scam us for $80 of our damage deposit for cleaning. He doesn't provide the required forms, just says, I'm going to hold $80 from your damage deposit for cleaning. We respond with, um, no. You're not. Jack, assuming we need the cash for our next damage deposit or bills and we'll settle for anything, take this or I'm going to keep your whole deposit. Cue revenge. So he decides to just keep the whole deposit, $485. I file paperwork with the rentals man, who unsurprisingly, after their investigation, rule in my favor. He's ordered to refund the whole deposit. But Jack decides, not to pay. And the rentals man doesn't have any enforcement powers, so I have to go to the local sheriff's office. They can send a legal demand letter for the deposit plus costs. But it will cost me $100 to $150, I forget, up front. Sure go ahead. Jack decides to ignore the sheriff's kindly letter. Sheriffs say that they can start proceedings to recover the debt plus costs, but I again have to pay up front, about $250 and it might take quite a while. I guess most people quit at this point. Being out of pocket $700, throwing more money at the problem and maybe having to wait months didn't appeal to them. And there's also a chance you never collect. I chose to pay the sheriffs. They sent another, less friendly letter to Jack. But here's the best part, now that they're recovering a debt, they're going to recover on all of the outstanding judgment against him. And apparently he has tried this shit before. They sent him another couple letters, pay up or else. Jack shows else. Then they seize title to Jack's giant white SUV, I can't remember what it was, but not a cheap one. They didn't physically take it away or anything, but they gave him 30 days to pay all the judgment against him or they would take it and sell it at auction. Somehow he all of a sudden found the money. My share, 
$1.485 plus $1.150 plus $1.250 equals $1.885. The other people who'd registered judgment, but not paid to start the collections processes were about $5,000 more. I can't remember how long the whole process took, at least 6 months though. I was driving home from a get-together, and was going 65 to 67 km per hour, 41 miles per hour, in a 60, 37 miles per hour, zone. Where I'm from the police almost never pull you over if you're going 10 or less over, but will definitely pull you over for anything over that. All was well until I got closer into my area. It's less city-like and more rural with the roads alternating between single and double lanes. I'm on a single lane speeding 10, 6 miles per hour, over when a pickup truck in my rear view caught my attention. They were going a tad bit faster when they caught up to me and promptly braked a meter behind me. I was like okay I'll speed up to 70, 43 miles per hour, no big deal but they continued to tailgate me. Upon closer inspection I could see the mug of a very angry woman who had no understanding of personal space. What ensued was a full 5 minutes of them completely obscuring my rear view mirror with how close they were. I was tired and kind of hungover, so I really was not in the mood to be worrying about a potential car accident thanks to her driving. I was going to pull over to let her go around when Waze gave me a heads up that a police officer was reported up ahead. This was when I decided I'm gonna dole out some karma. I slowly dropped my speed from 70, 43 miles per hour, to 60, 37 miles per hour, now at the speed limit. This woman was furious. Why she just didn't pass me, I'll never know, but she was literally going slightly over the midline, yelling to herself in my rear view, flashing her full brights in a weird show-offish way to get me to go faster. I did this for another min before Waze showed the cop was less than a km, 0.6 miles, away. I put on my turn signal, very slowly pulled over, and watched this woman flip me the bird as she whipped past me disappearing over the hill now going way faster than 10 km per hour over. I continued on my way, getting up to 70 km per hour, 43 miles per hour, when I cleared the hill to see flashing lights ahead. Jackpot. I drove with anticipation until I got close enough to confirm it was my friend from earlier. Not wanting to miss out on hitting her with our new secret greeting, I dropped down to 60 km per hour, 37 miles per hour peered over and flashed the bird back at her. I hope you enjoy the ticket Karen.